Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are having a fantastic, fantastic Saturday. I hope that you've gotten some reading in or you're relaxing or you're active or whatever you want to do on this Saturday. Um, because I'm super excited to come to you with a really fun video. I've spent most of my Saturday trying to get myself out of a reading slump. Um, I've had some issues getting into any books, even books I know that I'll love. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm about 50 pages into a new book and I am still there. So let's hope I've officially broken that reading slump. Um, but mum's the word because I don't want to curse myself. So this video is all in celebration of Women in Translation Month. I don't know if you guys are aware, I'm sure you are, if you are book two people like I am, that it is Women in Translation Month and in August. And my friends, Matthew Sharapa and Kendra Winchester and their friend, and I would sure she would be my friend too if we knew each other, Jennifer over at Insert Literary Pun, are hosting a readathon for Women in Translation Month at the end of the month from August 25th to August 31st. And I will link Matthew's kickoff video, all of their channels, all the information you need to know below, including the prompts. Now they have four prompts, they have two bonus prompts and a bonus point section. I'm gonna read you the prompts really quick, tell you what I'm gonna do in this video. This is a recommendation video um, for you if you wanna participate, if you wanna just do Women in Translation all month, here you go. But I do wanna do a bit of a caveat. I'm gonna do this fast. Um, I, as you guys know, I am not good with names, I'm not good with pronunciation, and I really do struggle. Um, and I got a pretty scathing email um, this week, pages long, about my translation issues, my ability to say names, and also with the fact that sometimes I misspeak and I have a couple of words off, I may say some things different. I want to apologize in advance. I do my best to be as accurate as possible. I struggle with names, I am upfront with that. Um, so I apologize if I do offend anyone. Um, I definitely offended this gentleman. He definitely wanted to write me about it, so I am very sorry. Um, but I just remind you, I am doing my best, and if I make mistakes, I'm sorry in advance. So there you go. Let's get on to this amazing readathon. I hope you all participate. Um, there are four prompts that I'm gonna go through real quick. Reading something that is not a novel is prompt number one. Number two is read a book about childhood. Number three is read a book with red on the cover. Number four is read a text translated from a language that you have never read a text translated from before. I have recommendations for all four of the major prompts. The bonus prompts are read a book that's translated posthumously. I don't have anything on my shelves for that. I am sorry, and also read a text written by a Nobel laureate. I have read texts translated by normal laureates, but I don't have any on my shelf, um, so I'm not gonna make any recommendations there, but I highly recommend if you do get in a chance um, to read some of the amazing women who have been uh, translated and won the Nobel Prize. And then the bonus prompt is read texts that were also translated by women translators. I have a number of books in this pile that will fit the bonus points prompt as well. So let's get started and see what I can get going for you guys. Weeding, weeding, reading Women in Translation readathon recommendations coming your way. So read something that is not a novel. I'm gonna go way back and sort of bring something from the past. Maybe a bunch of you have read this already before, but if you haven't, the graphic novel Parasopolis by Marjane Satrapi is definitely worth your time. Now this is originally translated from French um, my copy does not have the names of the translators in it, so I apologize that I'm not able to tell you that, um, because this is actually a duology that has been put into a, a one complete set. Um, these books do come separately, and they may have the translators in there into English. Um, but this is the story of the author, and it is a graphic novel of her growing up during the Islamic Revolution um, in Iran during the 1980s. I remember, and it's been years since I've read this, but I remember being taught so much interesting information. I also cried a little bit. I also was angry at some stuff. Um, she is phenomenal and um, so much, so much good stuff in this. So I highly recommend, if you haven't read this graphic novel, let me just show you some of the art too. Um, it is really stark and beautiful. And when it gets dark, it's just, it's so well done. So this is for prompt number one, read something that's not a novel, The Complete Parasopolis, a graphic novel by Marjane Satrapi, translated from the French. There you go. Okay, so prompt number two, read a book about childhood. 
for that, I'm going to go to a little book from Coach House Books, um, an independent press, um, and this is Little Beast by Julie Demers, translated from the Quebec French by R uh, Rhonda Mullins. Now, um, that fits the bonus prompt down at the bottom. Um, this book is about a young girl. I think she's about 10 years old. I'm not quite sure. 11 years old. And it's set in 1944 in a little town outside of Quebec where she is um, growing a beard. And uh, no one knows why. And her father leaves because of the disappointment and order disgust of his daughter. And the mom is trying to protect her daughter from the village due to sort of their idea of the fact that this young girl is cursed. Now, this has sort of a fairy tale ass aspect to it. I've heard nothing but great things about this book. Um, so that's Little Beast, translated from the French. It's written by Julie Demers and translated by Rhonda Mullins, and it is out by Coach House Books. So support your independent presses, because they do a lot of your translated fiction. So, there you go. Prompt number three, read a book with red on the cover. I have two recommendations from this. Um, the first book is um, 100 Shadows by Wang Zhuying. Sorry, my Korean is really weak. Translated by Zheng Yuin. And this is by Tilted Axis Press, which is Deborah Smith's um, imprint, which is, she's the translator for Han King, and Han King wrote The Vegetarian and the introduction to this little slim novel. This is set in Seoul, um, Korea, uh, South Korea, and this is about two friends who work in an electronic store in a part of town, um, sort of a slummy part of town, I think is how it's described in the beginning, um, slum electronics market in central Seoul, um, they've developed a friendship, but their little store is about to be torn down because of something going on. And there's a fantasy aspect because the people of this town, or the slum, are starting to revolt. Now, this book was recommended to me by Mercedes over at Mercy's Musings. This was part of her Mothbox series when she was doing that. So you know it comes with a high recommendation there. Anything with Deborah Smith's on it, uh, stamp of approval on it, is usually pretty good too. So this is 100 Shadows by Wang Zhuyang, translated from the Korean by Zhang Yuen. And you know what? I assumed that, um, yeah, I'm right. This is, this is. Um, you know when you have one of those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, is Zhang Yuen a female? And I know she is. I did all the research. Um, just had a blank maze. Oh, whoa. Um, so there you go. But I think highly recommend su support Tilted Actors Press. They're absolutely fantastic. Okay, Russell needs to talk faster or this video is going to take forever. Next up, out from Transit Books here in the U.S., has a different publisher in the U.K., is Swallowing Mercury by um, Waleta Gregg, translated from the Polish by Eliza Mars Marciniak? Marciniak? Now, again, this fits the bonus prompt and also it has red on the cover. This is set in 1980s Poland and is a sort of a reminiscence on um, Wyoletta's youth in a small farming town, I do believe, or agricultural community in Poland. Um, now, this was shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize in 2017, um, and I have heard nothing but fantastic things about it. I think the UK cover is phenomenal. And I think Transit Books is amazing here in the U U.S. if you don't, and they're local to me, so double, double points. And again, bonus prompt. There you go, a little bit of red on the cover. I believe the U.K. cover also has red on it. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, next prompt, and the last prompt that I'm going to specifically speak to, is read a book translated from a language that you haven't read a text translated from before. And I have two recommendations in that category. I don't know how many of you, sorry, Berkeley's in the room. Come here, Burke. Berkeley is in the room and he's having sort of a little breathing thing. So I'm sorry if you can hear him. I haven't read many books translated from Greek. So I'm going to recommend from Europa Editions um, by Lena Devani, translated from the Greek by, let me get you that name real quick, um, Constantine Matsukas. My Greek is even weaker. Well, it's, they're all weak, let's be honest. This is Seven Lives and One Great Love, Memoirs of a Cat. This sounds like a charming little book. It is about a cat who is in his seventh life and his relationship with a young, uh, inspiring writer. Um, it just sounds like it's going to be a lovely little tale. Um, and I don't know how many of you guys, actually, this fits the red prompt too, I would believe. 
You guys think this is red? I think it's red. Um, and this is, again, Lena Davina, Seven Lives and One Great Love, Memoirs of a Cat, translated from the Greek, out by Europa Editions. Europa, one of my favorite independent publishers, does amazing things. They're on here again in the future. Another book that sort of fits this is, because I don't know how many books you guys have read translated by Polish, but I have two recommendations in this stack, right? And this book actually comes out on um, August 13th in, the U 13th in the U.S. and is already out in the U.K., and that is Flights by Olga. Um, and I have tried to pronounce this last name a number of times, and... Um, this is one of the names that I get, uh, I got reprimanded for. So I will uh, leave it as is. But this was translated from the Polish by Jennifer Croft, who is an amazing translator. And this won the Man Booker International Prize this year. So it is going to be out by the time the readathon comes along in the U.S. And so this book is sort of a tale of interwoven stories that focus on the traveler, wanderers, bodies in motion, not through spa only space, but also through time. There's so many different sort of um, interwoven, unique tales. The first one on the back that's just like the first sentence is about a Dutch doctor or anatomist who discovers the Achilles tendon by actually doing an autopsy on his own um, leg that he has amputated. So there you go. Um, um, I've heard that this book is fantastic. I heard it's a little bit of a challenge because it will keep your mind going. Um, but again, it's out by Riverhead Books here in the U.S. Flights by Olga giving you the last name, translated from the Polish by Jennifer Croft. There you go. I don't know, two books by, out in Polish. I don't know if you guys have read a lot of them, but if you haven't, that helps with prompt number four and also as a bonus prompt. Um, the next couple books I'm just going to throw out there if you're reading anything in translation um, that you want. They're just some um, books that I've wanted to read or authors that I am highly fond of. Um, the first I'm going to recommend is Hotel Iris by Yoko. Um, Agawa. This is translated from the Japanese by um, Stephen Schneider. Now, I will recommend any books by um, Yoko Ago, uh, Ogawa. Um, I've read Hotel Iris, which is the one I'm going to talk about. Hotel, um, The Housekeeper and the Professor is also phenomenal. She has a collection of novellas called The Diving Pool. The only one I don't have, which I haven't been able to find a copy of book, she has a collection of short stories who I, that I also hear are fantastic. This is the dark tale of a love affair between a young girl and a um, man who comes to the, the hotel that the young girl's mother runs and sort of their weird, dark, crazy relationship. Um, and it is exactly everything I said. It's weird, it's dark, it's disturbing, it's thought provoking. Um, this is very well translated. She is an amazing writer. Um, I highly recommend all of her books. And um, yeah, so that's Hotel Iris by Yoko Ogawa. Up there, anything by her if you're looking to read for Women in Translation Month. Okay, the next book is translated from the French again again out by Europa Editions, and is actually part of my debut novels, You May Have Missed Book Club, but I wanted to make sure that I pointed out um, Disoriental by Nagar Javadi, and I'm going to put that name up there. Um, this is a, a story that starts in Iran. Well, it's about a, a young girl and her family who, uh, when she's young, I think about 10, her mother and sisters come to Paris from Iran. And they, the book starts with her in a Paris fertility clinic about to receive news, life-changing news, um, is how the blurb sort of to, um, spots it. And it says that what she does is she starts to reminisce about her life and goes back and it becomes sort of a family saga. So two things. One, this cover enough said. Two, I haven't read a lot of books set in Iran. I know I said that about the first book, but this is definitely a country I think that there's a lot to learn about. Um, and again, Europa Editions never lets you down. So this is Disoriental by Nagar Devadi and translated from the French by, oh, I should tell you, sorry, I didn't say that earlier. Um, translated from the French by Tina Cover. So bonus points if you want to go for bonus points right there. And I do believe it starts in her youth, so it may fit into the book about childhood prompt as well. Okay, last but not least, 
want to give a throw, uh, shout out to a book that I read last month, out again by one of my favorite independent presses, Unnamed Press, and that is The Hunting Party by Agnes de Sarth, translated again from the French by um, Christiana Hills. Now, this is the story of a young man who is new to a little town, and I say new only in that he is not, he's been there a few years with his wife, and she has got him invited on a hunting party so that they can become more part of the community. And basically what happens at the very start of the book is he shoots his gun, skims a rabbit, feels so guilty about it, puts the rabbit, which has not died, in his bag, and a philosophical conversation between him and the rabbit occurs as one of the other men is injured and he is taking care of that man, and also a torrential downpour is coming, a storm that is wiping away the town. Um, and it has a lot to do with your place in community. It also has a lot to do with relationships because you find some stuff out about the man who has been injured and on top of that, the, the narrator's wife. Um, and you find out a lot of stuff about how this, this has come to be. The discussion regarding being um, passive versus active in your life. Um, it is really well translated. The edition that is out from Unnamed Press um, has an introduction by Jesse Chaffee. You know how much I love her. And so again, this is the hunting, uh, just hunting party. I keep putting the in front of it. Um, by Agnes de Sarth, translated from the French by Christiana Hills, out by Unnamed Press. So there you go. I hope you guys participate in the Women, read uh, women in Translation Readathon being hosted by those amazing booktubers, Matt, Kendra, and Jennifer. Um, I hope that you guys do read some Women in Translation this month, and I hope some of these titles inspire you. As always, if you're a return subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I hope you liked this video. And always, until next time, happy reading, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!